Hey everyone, Port ASM. Welcome to part two of our Tamiya 124 Nissan Skyline R32 GTR video build. So, the ongoing saga of our Tamiya kit with the hobby design detail upset. So, part one, we did all the bodywork. We modified the bumper, the side skirt, added the resin bits. We got it all prepped, primed, painted, and clear coated. And what's left to do now is the running gear. And the interior. So today we're going to focus on getting near enough everything painted. Get it all painted and then in step three, uh, part three, we'll get it all assembled and finished. So kind of a mismatch of the way I do things, but that's good sometimes because normally in part two I do the running gear and in part three I do the interior. On this one, as I'm about to explain, I thought I'll cut all the parts off, clean them all up, paint them all together. And I think in the long run it was a time saver. It was excruciatingly monotonous to uh, clean all the parts up, prime and paint them all together. But I think it definitely is a faster process to do. So let me know down below in the comments, which way do you like to prep stuff? Do you like to do it? Do you follow the instructions to the letter and just pick a section to go to? Um, do you cut everything off and prime and paint it all in one go? Do you paint your parts on the sprue? Let me know in the comments down below. Always interested to hear how other people do things. So let's jump straight in with some surprise, surprise cleanup. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Okay, so on with part two of the build. Now we're gonna concentrate on the running gear and all the interior parts, get them all prepped, primed and painted. Now what I did on this, which I don't always do, is take every single part off the sprues and get them all prepped and primed. Uh, ready for paint. I don't normally do all this because it is a very boring um, part of the build cleaning up and it's all I ever seem to do. All I ever seem to do is this. Um, but we're going to do it just to get everything out of the way. Obviously we've got some aftermarket to do uh, including wheels. So we don't need to cut wheels or tyres so I'm placing the kit tyres on the wheels and they can go in the spares box. We also don't need the kit uh, discs either so they can go in the spares box as well. Don't throw away any parts, keep them all because you never know where you'll need them down the line. For everything else, we're going to cut the wall off as we've done, cut all the sprue points off using our snippers as close as we can, and then we'll come back in with a variety of ultimate sanders and clean up all the parts. So I like to use the 400 Dinny, uh, is one of my favourite sanders of them all, along with our buffer. Is uh, These are my go-to sanders pretty much everything. Anything curved, we'll use the grey sponge. Uh, and so on and so forth and thinny sticks depending on where and what they're required uh, engine we're going to glue the engine halves together with the transmission that way they can be left to dry so a little bit of our tamiya extra thin uh, plasti weld mix in there give a little bit of a squeeze a little bit of a hold if you need to clamp it get a clamp on it and hold it for an hour or so uh, pretty easy plastic to work with tammy even the older black stuff um, isn't too bad at all so it just takes a little bit of glue uh, a little bit of pressure and then once it's dried after an hour or so you can come back and sand it so as you can see we've got our grey 240 sponge and we're going to sand back that seam as good as we can now if you want to you can fill all this in to be honest the way it is in the car not a lot of it is on show so I don't get too hung up on filling the engines too much and with everything cleaned up it's a monotonous task it's a few hours of work uh, obviously it tends to be something I do on all the high streams because, well, it's just part and parcel of doing it. Uh, but basically cocktail sticks, if it's got a hole in it, we put the cocktail stick in it. If it hasn't, we drill a hole and put a cocktail stick in it. And if needed, we use CA glue to hold parts uh, as well. And some of our crocodile clip um, sticks to hold them as well. So whatever method it takes to hold the part, as long as they're held securely in place, they're not going to fall off mid-paint, that is good enough for me. So the first part to modify is the cooling fan. So we're going to cut off all the plastic veins. And there's a nice piece of photo etch to go in here. So we're going to cut them off and give them a quick clean up with a UMP sander, a thinny stick and sponge 
to get rid of all the old plastic. Just go back. Don't do misshape it, so don't go absolutely mental. Just enough to remove the old plastic where it's been. Like I say, it's a nice photo etch piece, as you can see here. I'm just test fitting it to have a look. Yep. Yeah. That goes on. So we're going to say glue that in place. And then we'll bend the uh, fan vanes to an angle similar to what was already there before. Now, much thinner vanes look a lot more realistic. So as a case, you put the shade glue in place, grab the photo etch, which is often easier said than done, and line it up. Make sure you get it centralized. And there we go. You need to give it a little bit of kick that you can off camera. Uh, well, I did off camera, should I say. And then we're just going to turn these fan blades until we've got pretty much equal angle on them all. And there we go. So there's that part. There we are. And that can go to one side. Now the exhaust on this, I wasn't happy with the exhaust. I modified the last one I did. So what we've got here is a little bit of hollow plastic tube. Not 100% sure of the dimension because it's just in my little extras piece here. I'll keep this in my drawer next to me so I don't have to go rooting through it all looking for it. Um, I would say it was about 9 mil. I think I measured it at 9 mil. So we've reamed out the end so it's got a much thinner tip on it. So it looks a bit more realistic. And I'm just going to make it a little bit longer than the one that's on the exhaust for the car now. We've got a JLC razor saw. And we're going to cut this off nice and flush. Have a little bit of a test fit. And as you can see, yeah, it's a little bit longer, which is perfect. And quite substantially bigger. So this will look the part once it's painted up. So we're going to straighten up the end. We've got our 220 UMP thinny stick. I'm just going to sand it and straighten it all up. Now, but we have a little ridge around the exhaust. So when we cut off the kit part, we're going to have to put little grooves in. Um, the middle of this to make sure it fits over the top i'll show you what i mean in a minute so just test fitting it making sure it's long enough which it is and then we can get our sprue cutters and cut off the kit exhaust now you can leave the kit exhaust should you want uh of course drill it out so it looks a bit more realistic but for me it's just too small these things deserve a nice big exhaust and even this is conservative conservative uh by some standards um some of these cars have absolutely massive exhausts uh but for me this is more than big enough. So we're going to clean up with the exhaust was uh, a standard. Like I say, there's a little ridge running through the middle. So I've got my round Sudi Burrito file. I'm just going to put a little groove either side. So that will then fit straight over that little lip and fit it flush to the exhaust. So a nice quick bit of scratch building. Which to me... Adds a world of difference to it. it makes it a lot more interesting. And we grab some of our Tammy Extra Thin Mix. We're just going to tack it in place to begin with. Hold it for a second or two. And have a little look. Make sure it's straight. It's centralised. It's just where we want it. It doesn't look odd. And as you can see, we still move it around. And it looks good to me. It's pretty straight. A little bit longer than the kit one. Nice and thin. So there we go. That looks good to me. Easy scratch. Well, that take five minutes. Then we just hit hit that with some extra thin again. Then we've got some resin parts. We've got a brand new intercooler for the front. Uh, we've got new brake discs and calipers as well, all in resin. So these need to be cleaned up. So I opted to cut the calipers off the mounting uh, points, and we'll you hold these on with super glue to the cocktail sticks. The discs I've left on um, their pour plug, and we'll cut them off later as required. So just drill a quick hole in the bottom. Let's get a cocktail stick in to mount it, ready for primer. Make life a little bit easier to do. And then the wheels. Now the wheels, a little bit disappointing. The actual spokes are pretty clean. Little wisps of resin, which the knife got off, no problem at all. But inside the actual outer rim of the wheel was very, very rough. And I couldn't really get in there to sand them. There was no way to get in there to smooth them off. So a little bit disappointing. But we cleaned them up as good as we could. And I've mounted them on Bulldog Clips uh, to spray them. Uh, while I was also cruising around the other week, I spotted these bride seats. and thought, well, they look pretty. So I bought these to go on the interior as well. Because uh, it's not like the kid seats. They're typical Japanese uh, sports car seats. The original is a little bit boring. These are nice. I like these. These are pretty seats. We have another thing on these. Oh, the decals printed back to front. should say bribe. It says Erdub instead. Not sure what's going on there. So if you know, 
let me know. But they fit together well. They're a nice looking seat. And they actually fit on the interior really well. So we're going to put some green Takata harnesses on these. Give the interior a bit of a two-tone colour. I'm thinking grey on grey. Uh, pretty bland by uh, normal standards. But Japanese car, pretty perfect to be honest. Pretty perfect. So that'll do us. But yeah, nice clean seats. Nice resin. They look really, really good. So we're definitely ready for primer. We've got some Mr. Service of 1500 black. Uh, this is obviously thinned with his top 11 thinner, about 60%. We've got our point through mill apex, we're about 14 PSI, 14, 16 PSI. And we're going to put a couple of coats down on all the parts. So because these are going to be sprayed in a metallic color, we are going to prime them in black. And we'll use various other colors. We're going to use gray and pink as well because we've got the gray interior to do. And we've got some red to do on the engine covers and the brake calipers as well. But the Mr. Surfacer primers are good. I do prefer Tamiya, personally. I wish Tamiya did a black surface primer, but they don't. So I use Mr. Hobby. Bit of a pain to get a hold of. But managed to get myself a nice little supply this the other week from Super Hobby in Poland. So if you need any of this and you can't get it, go to superhobby.co.uk. It is in Poland, but the postage was cheap and the delivery was fast. On our wheels now the wheels i'm priming in black because i originally did and you'll see it in a bit want to paint them in a bronze color I've got a gravity nismo bronze color and they looked all right they just didn't look great they weren't very eye-catching so a little bit of a color change later on and like i say the seats and the interior we're going to prime in all gray tamiya primer so same thinned what's this thinned about 20 percent the tamiya lacquer thinner with retarded decanted primer so it's already pretty thin out the can. And again, 14, 16 PSI, a couple of light coats of the resin. The resin's all been wiped over you and airbrush cleaner as well. So we know it's fully degreased. And like I say, we can do all the interior part as well. So it's getting a little bit boring in the interior, but it's pretty standard for what these cars are. We'll make it a bit interesting with some nice belts and what have you. Like I say, the cam cover for the engine, the cam, cam belt cover, and the brake calipers we're going to paint in red. So we've got some Tamiya fine surface primer decanted here as well in pink. I do like this pink primer. It's a nice color and a nice primer. And the same for the interior as well. We can just get it all primed up. So a nice priming session. A good hour and a half work here to get everything primed, I think it was. So a lot of spraying to do. And the patience of you lot watching on the live stream was appreciated while I did it. It was, it was at least an hour. I think I spent priming this little lot. Maybe not as long. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but it did take me quite a while to do. A lot of parts, but here we go. We're done. And then, like I say, it's the exhaust. Um, covering up where we scratch built our tailpipe. We're painting in Mr. Service of 1500 Black. Sadly, I forgot a few bits, so I had to go back to the black. Put a few coats of that, and that's done. And then after the prime is dried for a good six hours or so, it's very warm at the minute. We've got some Tamiya LP. I believe it's 46. Nope, 42. Uh, which is their mica silver. So a very nice colour. So that was recommended to me to use, and I did. Yeah, a good suggestion by Mr. Parker. And a couple of coats of this. This is thinned with Tamiya like a thin with retarder. About 60%. And then for the wheels, we use Tamiya LP7 red. Slightly different red, just to give it a little bit of tonal difference. And then for a vast majority of the parts underneath, we're going with LP5 semi gloss black. Pretty standard stuff. We did the same on the chassis, didn't we, as well? Um, so it is, they are all business, these cars. There's nothing really all that pretty or aesthetic about them. They're all business, they're just powerhouse machines. So, yeah, they're not the most eye-catching to build, but we have the detail where we can. Like I say, I think it's a couple of coats of LP5. The exhaust we're doing in Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Super Iron. Love this colour, absolutely beautiful. This is through the 0.2 mil apex now, 14, 16 PSI. And we're going to put a couple of coats of this down, and what a wonderful colour. You need to make sure you get all the little angles and recesses uh, and build it up. It does need a few coats to do. So 
I find by the time you spray one section, you go back, you can go over it again. It's very, very forgiving. It dries very, very fast. This is thinned with the rapid thinner, and it does dry ultra, ultra quick. So I find you can get several successive coats on very quickly in one sitting. Uh, what a color. Just look at the depth of that. Absolutely beautiful metallic. Absolutely stunning. Use the same color on the brake disc as well. We've got some photos to go on these, so the color's not all that important, but the iron's a good color um for these so that's what i used nice and simple it was already in the airbrush so we already had it and the same on the turbos um on the inlet and on the inlet yeah it'd be the inlet this one for the uh, engine as well the actual um main engine itself we're done in the old mistobi super metallic uh super fine silver you can see the bottle at the back there were bigger bottles back then it's a slightly different shade to the new one not all that noticeable but it is a little bit different. It's not quite as good as a new one, but it's in the way this bottle. There's not much of it left. I thought, you know what? I might as well use it. But as you can see, it's a beautiful metallic. I've said this in the past few videos. Mr. Hobby Super Metallics are fast becoming my favorite of the metallic paints. Uh, there's only nine in the range. Actually, technically, there's ten. I picked up the new colors of the day, the copper, super gold, and dual aluminum the other day. And uh, they are beautiful as well. Now the wheels, so we've got uh, Nismo uh, bronze color from Gravity, which is a lovely color. Don't get me wrong, it is very, very pretty. I've got a picture of the rims next to the wheels, uh, the car in a bit. And I think on a lighter color car, maybe white, black, well, not, maybe not black, but red, colors like that, these would look great. I think on this purple color, um, I just didn't like the look of them. They just didn't look right against the purple. But it's a stunning color. Look at the color. Absolutely beautiful. Highly pigmented. And just an absolutely beautiful color. Masking. So I'm just quickly masking off one of the seat centers. Just checking it. And then masking off the rear seats as well. So the plan is, or was, to spray a light gray and then a dark gray. But looking at the primer color, I thought, you know what? That primer color is actually a really nice gray. That'll do. So I just masked up. All the center of the seats using the Tamiya uh, 1, 2, and 3 mil tapes, um, and then infilled with some 6 and 18 mil later on. And then we'll spray a darker gray over it uh, to finish. So, some tricky masking, but worth it in the end because we've got a nice two tone interior that we're after. And then my uh, girlfriend Hannah will currently flock it for me. She's getting good at the flocking now. And um, <laughs> if you know, you know, I refuse to do flocking in my cave because the last time I did it, it ended up in my clear coats for, for about three months. So I refuse to do it in here and I tend to do it in the house. And if I do it in there, it still gets all over me and ends up in clear coats. So Hannah does it for me now. That way I've got no contact with it at all and it cuts down any mess in here. And to be fair, Hannah does a good job. Does a very good job. It's a simple method. Using enamel paint where you want the flock in using a tea strainer to sprinkle it over and job done nice and easy but with the mask in we get it all in place burnish it all down with a sharpened uh, cocktail stick or a pointy cocktail stick and that is ready for some paint so like i said the japanese car interiors are not the most interesting they are kind of monotone so i knew it was going to be a bit of a boring interior um but you've got to make the best of what we can we bought some nice seats for it we got the nice harnesses, so a little bit of visual interest. I'd make it a two-tone well and adding the flock in to carpet the area will make it look a little bit more interesting as well. So you make the best of what you can, uh, make it look as interesting as you can. But the Tamiya tapes, absolutely wonderful for doing jobs like this. And there we go. Now in the spray booth, we have got Mr. Color. Let me try and find the bottle. C305. So this is the color I use for that Lamborghini Aventador ages ago do you remember that one the one that i had a nightmare with yeah uh, i also believe this is the f15 color i used as well and uh, i still got a bottle and a half of it knocking around and i thought you know what it's a nice dark gray so i thinned it 60 percent with mr leveling thinner uh and we're going to put down a few light coats to give our dark accent to our interior so on this we need to do all the partial shelf we don't really need to but the partial shelf the back seat center console and the door cards because the rest of it is already masked and the rest of it is going to be flocked anyway so as long as you get nice even coats down we're not flooding the mask intakes we don't want it to um seep under and run 
and then obviously we do the dashboard in the same color. Now, on some of the cars, I've noticed they are two-tone. They have some black accents. I didn't do that. I put a wash on it instead. I didn't want to put any real black accents on this because I thought it would highlight it looked a bit odd. I did think of doing like the handbrake handle and the gear knob in black, but no, I wanted to keep it gray. So I kept it like this. And the seats, obviously, front seats are masked off as well and given the same treatments. This, this resin on these seats is stunning. They are very, very nice seats. So a couple of light coats of this. Obviously, we don't want to flood it. We don't want any bleed under the tape. So just take our time, build it up nice and slow. Beauty of lacquers is they do dry super fast, especially in the warmer temperature we're getting at the minute. Same for the bottom as well. Just some nice light coats. And there we go. Mr. Colour, very good paints. I still rate the Tamiya LPs a little bit higher. I prefer the way they spray. They just spray a little bit different and they don't stink as bad. The Mr. Colours, it's actually the Mr. Hobby Leveling thing. It just absolutely reeks. I really do prefer the Tamiya lacquer thinner of Qatar than myself. Now, the wheels, like I say, I originally intended to use this colour, the bronze. Uh, leave the actual rim silver, put the bronze in the middle. So we just got some of our thicker CA glue here with one of our precision tip applicators and we're just holding it in place and spinning the rim gently excuse my head being in place we will zoom in a minute so we just put a nice bead of shea glue around the edge like so nice precise easy way of doing it and then we grab our tweezers gently pick up the wheel and then pop it in place like so hold it for a few seconds like i say color's beautiful the wheels looked really really nice i just don't think they suited the car. Like I said, I've got some pictures in a second, and I just don't think they looked right at all. So I've zoomed in a little bit here. As you can see, these precision CA glue tips are just absolutely wonderful. You can get these in my Amazon store, link down below in the description of the video. And with this CA glue, this is good cheap CA glue. Um, it's like six pounds for two 20 gram bottles. It's, uh, it's really, really good. Nice thick glue, dries really strong. And uh, like I say, if you do get any excess on the white, uh, the white metal on the turn down the minium get a pointed cotton bud again these cotton buds are lifesavers as well you can get these in my amazon store you can wipe off any excess if you do get any excess get a bit of acetone on there as long as it's not plastic you can wipe it over then glue it in like i say look at that color beautiful color really is nice the whole car would look great painted in this color and the wheels did look really good i just don't think they suited this car I really don't. I just think they look a bit odd. And uh, yeah, as soon as I tried them on, I was like, yeah, I'm not too sure about them. But anyway, in the meantime, we've painted all the road wheel, not, not using LP61, a fine brush and a bit of patience. Just go through and paint them all. It's something a lot of people seem to forget. I notice this quite a lot. They don't paint the road wheel nuts. And it is quite a you know eye-catching point. Uh, I'm terrible for not doing door handles and door locks. Absolutely terrible. It's just something that never slips my mind. Always slips my mind. Always does. But, you know, it's a worthy thing to do. So, as I said before, my wonderful girlfriend, Hannah, does the flocking for me. And as you can see, we've got some nice grey flocking at the top right now. Um, another tone of grey. So, I think it looks quite good. Three different tones in there. There's a bit of visual interest. And that's a scale motorsport flocking. Bit of enamel paint where you want it. Uh, sprinkle over the flocking. Tap it on. Tap the excess off, job done. And here's our front seat all painted up. These are looking really good now. And we're going to pop a little bit of CA glue in place. There's a little locating point underneath. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue around that. You don't need to go mad. Like I say, these precision applicators, I keep going on about them, but trust me, get them. They are so well worth having. A lot less mess and a lot less uh, hassle using them. And you can keep it on there for hours and it doesn't really dry. And if it does, you can just snip it a little bit shorter and you're off again going. And the great thing is the glue doesn't stay in the tube. But as soon as you let go of it, it sucks all the glue back into the bottle of the super glue. So you never waste any glue in the tube. It's really, really good. And there we go. There's a seat glued together. And it's a little bit of a test fit in place to make sure they sit. And they actually mount on the original seat mount really well. Now there were some nice uh, photo etch uh, plates for these to kind of make the seat rails, but they didn't fit in. I test fitted them, and where the mounts off the original seats, it didn't touch them at all, whereas without them, the flat bottom fitted perfect, so I opted not to use those. Dashboard, we got a nice bit of PE 
with the hover design set so I pop this in place and that way when we pop on the instrument cluster decal it will mold itself all around that uh, photo edge binnacle not binnacle but instrument panel and there we go and then in the Nismo version comes this white dial set so I kind of pilfered this out my other kit um, but we still have a spare one for the other one as well and all the uh, auxiliary dials are white as well. And I thought, you know what? It looks really good. I'm going to nick those and pop them in this one. Like I say, you get two sets, so the other kit is just fine. And then I had some Brembo uh, brake logos in my spurs, which were better than the ones that came with the kit. So I opted to use these, UMP decal solutions, setting those in place. And then a nice decal for the top of the cam cover on the engine as well and this comes with the nismo version of the kit as well so we did nick this so what we're going to do next time we'll figure out we'll figure that out but looks nice i like the red looks really good engine's good on this it's not bad at all it's not one to be like look at this look at the hard work i did because it's not that detailed to show but it's good enough to spend a bit of time painting if you know what i mean i didn't get any pictures of it at the end of the build either i completely forgot so i'll have to take some uh kind of separate pictures and put them in when we finish to show it but you know it's not one of those ones that's not really worth showing off um but it is worth doing to put it in place so some xsp pieces going in place there hobby design sets nice detail set it really is nice uh whether it's worth uh, i think it's supposed to be 70 pounds rip I think I pay 50 for it is another question because the wheels aren't great quality, the bumper was all warped, but there is quite a bit in it for the money. I've got some photo edge pedals now. So we've got the accelerator, the brake, and the clutch as well. So a little dab of CA glue and there in place. Gonna leave those totally silver and pop a wash near at the end to accent the detail in them. And then the steering wheel, I've used a Nismo decal. Whether that's correct, whether it'd have it on a greedy body kitted car, I've no idea. Uh, and then some black Tamiya panel line wash to accent it all. I'm going to put that all around the panel lines and the heat events and all around that center console as well. It added a nice bit of depth. Like I said, on the real car, a lot of this is painted black. Um, I didn't want to add any black, like I said. I wanted to keep it all gray. Um, so didn't want to do that. So the wash was enough for me. It highlighted everything and just added a little bit of depth to it all. And the seats. Now, I originally put a black panel line wash on this. It was a little bit too of a stark contrast. So it was a little bit, whoa, what have you done? So I let it dry and I mixed up a nice dark grey colour instead and went over it again. And it toned it down enough so that you could see that it had been washed without being like, holy crap, that's a bit too much of a contrast there, Batman. So we'll pop this on, leave a half an hour and take it off. And these are those wheels. So they're the bronze wheels and I just don't like them. I just don't think it suits the purple colour at all. Uh, they look nice, don't get me wrong. Um, I just really don't think it suits the purple. So yeah, I changed my mind on these and painted them white instead. So they were reprimed in Tamiya White Primer. And then this is actually the paint for the Lancia uh, Modified to Hero Kits. So this is uh, Lancia Delta White. And why do you use it? Well, I had a bit of it at hand, so I just popped it on. And uh, the wheels look much better in white, as you'll see at the end of the build. Detail painting. We've got a lot of detail paint still on the smaller part. So I've got some Vallejo Model Color Black, thinned with a drop of water. Windsor Newton Brush. I'm just going around and brush painting any of the parts that need painting black. So primarily the prop shaft, drive shaft, and the CV joint gaiters as well. And then we'll paint the actual uh, drive shafts at the front in metallic grey. Whether that's right or wrong, don't know, but that's what I opted to do. Uh, and then suspension struts, we've sprayed red before. So the springs are red. And we're going to do the actual shock strut in black. And then there's some hosing and joints and what have you to do on the engine. So we've painted those in black as well. So nice bit of hand painting. I do like this from time to time. It's very cathartic to do. It's like going back to your you know, younger days where you brush painted everything because you didn't have an airbrush. And uh, it's nice to do from time to time. And we get good paints like the Mr. Uh, sorry, the uh, model colours from Vallejo and the Model Air. 
Um, Modeler Metallics brush paint really well. So they're the only two I tend to brush paint, to be honest. And they do work very, very well. And then the air cleaner box, I painted all the uh, hose and the side of the box in the below what I call the black. And on the anti roll bar, the bush mountains as well. And then just detail painted a couple of parts on the engine cover too. So nothing too drastic, just enough to add a bit of detail here and there. Like I say, the drive shafts are done in LP61. Even though the lacquers are a bit tricky to paint, if you load your brush up and don't go over it too many times, it doesn't really have any detrimental effect on the paintwork. It works quite well. So that works really well. And then I'm just going to paint all the pulleys on the auxiliary belts as well in LP61. And then we can do our alternator in silver in a bit. So... Like I say, as long as you don't go too mad with the lacquers, they do brush paint really well. Especially the metallics, they do go on really nice. And then some detail painting. The resin calipers have the resin brake pads in them. So I very carefully painted those up as well. You can't really see them when they're on. But I thought, you know what, the paint's already here. I'm already at it, so I might as well go at it. And the beautiful thing is, if you get water-based paint on lacquer, it just wipes straight off. And like I say, the alternator, we've got some Vallejo Model Air Silver. The Air Range Metallics brush paint very, very well. And that bottle of mine I've had for years is now coming to an end. I have painted hundreds and hundreds of models with that bottle of paint. And it's just coming to the end of its life. It's just a few last morsels of paint in there. So it needs a honourable discharge at the end. Maybe give it a, a Viking funeral or something. Um, but yeah, really has worked well. A wash, you know my motto, but hold a wash, get a wash in it. So we put it into the suspension springs, all over the exhaust. Uh, this is thinned a little bit with Sansador, so it's not quite as thick as this one comes out of the bottle. But you know my motto, but hold a wash, and it's metallic, get a wash in there. And as usual, we'll let it dry for half an hour or so, get some Sansador on the cotton board, and wipe off all the excess. And it just adds a bit of depth to all the metal work. Nice and simple, quick, easy step to do. And our wheels. So these have dried overnight. We've got our tyres. These are handed. They go on the, the way that the pore plugs are at the back. So it's easy to do. Now, with this being fresh paint and it's on metal, uh, you need to be very, very careful putting the tyres on. So try not to put too much excess pressure on the, the front of the tyre, uh, the wheel with the tyre, because it will take the paint off. And just very carefully push them in place like so so remember the centers of resin it will break very easily and if you push it from the back it will unglue itself and ruin all your paint um, very easily as well so take your time and get it all lined up you will often find in resin wheels sometimes the tire is not as wide as the wheel as you can see here it's just the way they go unfortunately sometimes they are like that and again paint the road wheel nuts again with lp61 Needs must, unfortunately. We've already repainted them, so we have to redo it again. And there we go. That's where we're going to leave it today. We'll be back with part three very soon to finish this project off. Okay, there we go then. So, yes, lots of preparation, patience required there. Uh, it was a good few hours of cleanup there and lots of painting to do as well. Got to change the colour on the wheels. You'll see at the end, this is already finished. It's in the case behind me there. I know what it looks like. Um, that wheel colour is a beautiful wheel colour. It's just not the colour for this car. So it's not going to be used on this one. Um, I think it would be good for like a, a brighter colour car maybe. Where the, the wheels don't kind of look a bit strange next to a dark colour. I don't know. But it's a cool colour. And I hope to use it in the future. But I'm glad I did them white. Happy with all the other colours. They've turned out well. Uh, the Mr. Obby Super Metallics are wonderful, absolutely beautiful, and uh, yeah, that's where we're at today. So, we're gonna leave it there, and we'll be back for part three, which is already edited, ready to go, uh, very, very soon. And we'll get this project finished. So, there we are, that's where we're at. So, as always, like support the channel, keep the videos going and the live streams going. I have a patron in the link down below. I know it's boring to say, but if you become a patron tier two or higher. You're two weeks ahead of releasing all the videos, and there's loads of these videos. They're all two weeks behind from my SM, or ahead rather. 
Uh, so there's at least four or five on there that you won't see for another couple of weeks over on ISM. So it is worth becoming a patron for early release. And then you're safe in the knowledge that you know and you're keeping these videos going. So thank you all for your support. And if you're considering becoming a patron, thank you for considering it. <laughs> Simple as that. There's also a PayPal me and a Buy Me Coffee link there as well. And there's links to everything social media wise on ISM. So you've got the forum, Facebook page, UMP Retail, my own modeling stuff, my own modeling page, and all the group bill page, offer hangouts, etc. etc. And it's my Amazon affiliate store. We can get all the products I find in all my videos. Um, and a product list as well if it's not in the store. If you've got any questions, an email down there as well. I do answer the emails if you email me directly. And um, please leave a comment. Appreciate all the comments left by everybody. Uh, and if you're not subbed, hit the subscribe button, click that bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up as well. So there we are. So I've already asked you a question at the beginning today. So they ask one at the end. Hmm. Let's see. So a question I've been told, or something I've been told before, is my builds are a bit monotonous because it's the same thing I do all the time. But I always try and add something different in there. Um, what do you guys think? For those that regularly watch my videos, what do you think of my build process? Would you like to see things done differently? Is there anything you'd like to see in the videos? Is there anything you'd like me not to show in the videos? And something that ha has crossed my mind is a few years back, it's probably three, four years ago now, I did the Subaru Techniques Guide, do you remember? The 13, 15 part series where I did step by step how to do a specific thing on a car build. Should I do a new one? Should I do a new one? Because my modeling's moved on a little bit. Um, and some of my techniques have changed. Should I do a new technique series? What do you think? Let me know down below. That's the question. And some feedback on the videos would be great as well. There we are. Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Bye-bye.